clock's going to go. I'm going to replace this with the ormolu. The ormolu doesn't work. Well, neither does this one, unless it's propped up under one leg. But you got that for 25 years at International. Yes, but I don't need reminding of it. You don't stay 25 years with the same firm if you're a rising executive. Who did? Yes, well, I don't want to advertise the fact. No, I'm getting rid of it. And this music box from the Tyrol. And that horrible little gong. And that tatty lamp. The lamp? But when you switch it on, the windows in the little house light up. <laughs> well, I like it. <laughs> well, I don't. It's rubbish. Oh, Fiona. I want you to make some changes in the dining room. Yes, Mr. Willard. From now on, we'll be using the best cutlery and the china. And we won't be using those glasses I got from the garage. The ones that look like potted meat jars. <laughs> We're going into cut glass. Have you any idea of the price of cut glass, Mr. Willard? I am well aware of the price of cut glass, Fiona. But I'm not leading a second-rate existence any longer. And you can get rid of these things. I've got the decorators coming in on Monday, and they don't go with the way I see the room. And how do you see the room? Well, it has to reflect my personality. I see it in French beige, moulded ceilings, matching sofas, moss green carpet, velvet drapes and wall lights. No more grot. Everything has to be simple. Simple? And you think that will reflect your personality, Mr. Woodley? <laughs> simple good taste, Fiona. One's life should be an art form. Oh, and I want you to bring back that Ormolu clock. It doesn't work. No, no, it doesn't work, but it looks better. What are you going to do? Stand by to move the hands? Never mind. Just get rid of this stuff, particularly this tatty lamp. I'll never know why I had that in the first place. I do. Matthew bought it for your birthday. <laughs> huh. uh, perhaps you'd like the lamp in here, Matthew. I bought it for you. Oh, well, uh, perhaps we could put it in the downstairs loo. <laughs> the downstairs loo? It's a conversation piece. Yes, I can see that. <laughs> Listen, I've got nothing against the lamp, Matthew. I like the way the little windows light up. Then why are you throwing it out? Because it doesn't go with the new decor. You seem to be making a lot of alterations. Yes. It's a woman, isn't it? What? Someone's coming and you obviously want to impress. It must be a woman. It's not a woman. It's my brother. Your brother? Edward, your godfather. I've never met him. You did at the christening. <laughs> he marked his suit. And he's my godfather. Mm. Well, he didn't take his vows very seriously, did he? Where was he when I was confirmed? Didn't even send me a prayer book. No, to tell the truth, he's never shown much interest in you. He's always been too busy being a success. Is he a success? Oh, yes. He's personal advisor to Lord Fell. Who's Lord Fell? Fell Holdings, multinational. With more income than Saudi Arabia. And Uncle Edwards, his personal advisor. Yeah, he advises him on takeovers. Is he rich? Oh, yeah. Is he married? No, nah, he's always too busy to get married. He's had a succession of... What? <laughs> never mind. Mistresses? I said never mind. No family. And I'm his godson. Don't get too optimistic, Matthew. Not after what you did to his suit. <laughs> Well, what do you think? There's a lot of white. <laughs> Is that all you can say? There's gonna be trouble over marks. Well, don't make any. And don't lean back on that cushion. I've just plumped it. And all this is for Uncle Edward, isn't it? There's no right that I don't like him. You will. He can charm the birds off the trees. Before he's been here five minutes, you'll be offering to carry his case upstairs. Not me. I'm not impressed by capitalists and their bourgeois values. As far as I'm concerned, all men are equal. All right, you can spare me the part of political broadcast. Go and look out for his Rolls Royce. What? <laughs> you mean he's got a roller? Mm. Crikey, what the neighbour's going to say? <laughs> well, what do you think, Fiona? There's a lot of white. <laughs> it'll be difficult to keep clean. On the contrary, it'll be very easy to keep clean be able to see the dirt before it settles. Dirt has never settled in this house, Mr. Willows. No, no, of course not. Now, listen, I want your advice, Fiona. Now, should we leave the curtains open so we see the sweep of the lawn and next door's rabbit hutch? 
Or should we draw them and enjoy their rich, velvety texture? It's daytime, Mr. Willows. It'll darken the room. Yes. Yes, but then he'll see the effect of the wall lights. He'll think we're in mourning. Yes. Perhaps you're right. Mm. I see the clock stopped again. Oh, no. Should I bring the other one back? No, no. He won't be in the room for long. I'll put it on five minutes. <laughs> Mr. Willows, I've never met your brother, but I must say I don't like the effect he's having on this house. You like him, Fiona. He's very good looking. Handsome is as handsome does. Oh. <laughs> Edward? Henry. You've done the room. What? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> what a pity. Oh. <laughs> I wish I'd known. I have this man, enormously talented, did a wonderful job on the townhouse, worked entirely in vermilion. That's all right. My man's incredibly gifted. Does a lot of work for the council. <laughs> did it like this to reflect my personality? Yes. <laughs> Whites out, I'm afraid. What? Well, <laughs> sir. This is Matthew. He's grown. Well, of course he's grown. You haven't seen him since the christening. I mean, he's... Matured into a fine-looking young man. <laughs> do you like the stones, Matthew? Yeah. So do I. Very nice lads. Much maligned. Do you know them? Well, we've met a few times. I'll try and get you some tickets, huh? <laughs> this is uh, Fiona. Delightful. Very pleased to meet you, Fiona. He's been on his own for far too long. I'm glad you're helping him to pick up the pieces. <laughs> She's exquisite, Henry. She's the cleaning lady. <laughs> no, you're putting me on, Henry. No cleaning lady ever looked like this. No, he's right. I'm the uh, housekeeper. <laughs> I'll make some tea. Well, uh, perhaps you'd like to freshen up. Matthew, would you show Uncle Edward to the guest bedroom? Where's that? <laughs> the spare room. Oh, right. Uh, let me carry your case, Uncle Edward. Oh, thank you, Matthew. Decanted the port, Edward. Uh, why don't you sit there? The Matthew, the napkins. Hey, in the drawer. Mm. Oh, didn't know we had any of these. The boy doesn't dine with me very often. Henry, I'm a bit worried about the car. I'd bring it off the road, but uh, your drive's rather narrow and I might run over the borders. <laughs> you think it'll be safe? Oh, I shouldn't think so. I mean, it could attract the attention of the envious around here. That's why I've never had one. <laughs> really? Yes. Yes, then, of course, Matthew's only just learned to drive. I want to eliminate his rough spots before we get the XJ6. The what? XJ6? Yes, my room with pale grab holstery. Well, this attract the attention of the envious? Well, it would if I stayed, but as you know, this place has just been somewhere to rest my head. I'm away a great deal on business, and of course, when Matthew goes to college, we're hoping for Oxford. What? <laughs> uh, then there's no point in staying. I should probably sell, get a little pied de terre in the city, possibly a cottage for holidays. Cottage in the country? No, no, uh, Crete or Tuscany. <laughs> so I believe you can still get something pretty reasonable. Just somewhere to hang the old sandals and swimming trunks. I didn't know anything about this. You only just decorated. Well, you attend to your duties, Mrs. Bell. <laughs> but won't all this require a great deal of money, Henry? Yes, but fortunately, the promotion will help. Promotion? Mm, there's been a great deal of changes at International. Sir John's been taking more and more of a back seat. Sir John? Isn't he the chairman? Yes, yes. Depends on me more and more these days. <laughs> Will you stop staring, Matthew? Well, oh, your career certainly seems to have taken off, Henry. Yes. It's hard work, but I enjoy it. Sir John says, shed your workload, Henry. But the next minute he expects me to have all the facts at my fingertips. 
You see, the trouble is, I can't delegate, Edward. Some nights that phone never stops ringing. It hasn't rung tonight. <laughs> no, it hasn't rung tonight because I tell my secretary I am not available. Do you do much work at home? Oh, yeah. Only I noticed you don't have a desk. <laughs> but usually I go back to the office. In fact, I think I'll go back after dinner. Oh, I'll come with you. What? I'd like to see it. I'd like to see your office. Unless there's a problem. <laughs> no problem. Good. There are three boys playing on your car, Mr. Willows. What? <laughs> what are you doing, Dad? Houses, cars, you can't afford this. Why not? Brochures don't cost anything. <laughs> Excuse me. Edward, this is the nerve center, and this is where all the big decisions are made. Now, let me see. Water jugs, glasses, pads, pencils, good. Looks as if there's going to be a meeting. Is it? <laughs> Didn't you know? Well, we have so many meetings, Edward. Hello, this pencil hasn't been sharpened. I'll have words about that. What is your job exactly, Henry? Well, 